Well, hey, it's like almost Christmas time, so it's late in the season, but I thought I'd share this with you. It is 7 a.m. December the 17th in 2023, and just went out and looked and was a little bit surprised to see the water up over the dock. We had this sort of unusual low pressure system that formed in the Gulf of Mexico and uh, made landfall on the west side of Florida, you know, in the Tampa area, sort of mid to northern part of uh, Florida on the west side. And it's going to go across Florida up along the east coast and it'll travel all the way up, you know, into New York, New Jersey uh, over the next few days. But I was surprised at just how high the water was. You can actually see jet skis just touching the water on the bottoms of them. And with that, it's time for my regular morning coffee routine, and I'm going eastbound on Olympia Boulevard toward downtown, which is the section where it's one way. And as you can see, there's starting to become more and more water here. Uh, a little bit surprised. It doesn't look all that deep, but, you know, I went around that car, and I can see some more up in front of us slowly working their way through it. And you can see the lines on the road, so you can see it's only three to five inches or something like that. And you know, I'm driving slow, five miles an hour or something. I decided I better just check and make sure that it's not too deep. I just opened the door and looked, and it was definitely still below the running boards on our four-wheel drive truck. So it was okay to kind of continue here and take it nice and slow. But you can see people have moved their cars out of their driveways down this street and up onto this one, thinking that it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't sort of flood. But as you kind of look down these roads to the left, you'll see it's significantly deeper. I'll go ahead and show that here in just a second as I pan to the left. That is really shocking. So the people that live down there move those cars out of their driveways. All right, so continuing here on Olympia Boulevard, uh, and we're going up here to where that, that large um, church is on the left-hand side, coming kind of right up at McGregor Road, if you're familiar with the area. So I am... Um, kind of halfway between Fisherman's Village and downtown Punta Gorda. I'm really just surprised at how deep the water was here. Uh, clearly it's over our dock right now at 7.05 or 7.10 a.m., but it must have been up over the seawall to blow this, this uh, water all the way in. And again, I'm cutting these things because I'm obviously you know, stopping and making sure I'm being safe and driving very, very slow here so I could get these recordings. But you can see ahead of us here those flashing lights. I'll get back to that in in just a second um, but what's interesting is as we look down these side streets you can just see uh, how deep the water is which is shocking because we're now at a place where it looks like it's starting to get a little bit more shallow um, yeah I mean take a look down these like every one of these streets are are flooded out um, but those blinking lights up ahead just beyond the lights uh, traffic lights that is because Olympia is closed past highway 41 for the water so I ran to the store up in Port Charlotte and I was coming back. This is on the north side of the bridge and you can see even these homes right there along the water. I was a little bit surprised at the depth of the water uh, even right here. So from here I went south on 41 going over the bridge and that big cabin cruiser was actually up against the wall last night and you can see that sailboat just hobby horsing away out there. So once over the bridge I turned on to um, Reda Esplanade heading westbound. And again, same sort of thing, right? You could see water all over in the park here, so it must have splashed up and run over that and then down into this lower part on the other side of the road. Uh, you can kind of see here, I'm looking to the south from here. Uh, that's kind of the direction where I was driving earlier in the video. But yeah, quite a bit of water all throughout here. Just surprising. So as we continue westbound here on Reda Esplanade, again, you can see the water. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's all on the left side or the south side of Reda Esplanade. There's some on the right side where this uh, park is. Gilcrest Park is what I think it's called, but I don't know. Uh, but man, just, I mean, that is, you know, it's a foot and a half to two feet deep down there. It's not crazy high. And most of these houses are up high enough to sort of handle that, but can't be easy to look out your window and see that you're sort of a, a, a homeowner's island, if you will. So from here, I decided, you know what, I'm going to turn in where the old YMCA building is and just pull right up to the edge of the waterfront. Um, and you can kind of take a look out here. The water was just starting to, um, you know, still lap over that wall just a bit. But uh, I noticed in just this hour I was driving around and running to the store, the water dropped almost a full foot at our dock. So this was probably flowing up over it with every bit of wind and waves earlier in the evening. Even behind the yacht club here, you can see it's right at the very edge of their, their sort of bulkhead. And the boats seem to be, for the most part, doing pretty well out there. Um, they're all sort of at their anchor, if you will. 
Yeah, so pretty amazing. So I'm now um, so sort of driving east and turning to the south as I head back out of this parking lot here where the YMCA building is, which, by the way, was damaged in Hurricane Ian. They're deciding what to do with it. So as I pull out of this little YMCA parking lot and I go westbound on Reda Esplanade, you can see the, the water continues here all along this waterfront. Um, I don't think there's much damage or any damage to any of these homes. Maybe a couple of the cars the water might have got a little too high on, but I think for the most part, they're probably going to be safe. Uh, it's just surprising when you see not the ground, but water, sort of everywhere you look. It's um, a little bit shocking. You know, even this house, you can see that it's it's up high enough for the most part that water's not in it, and that bottom's likely sacrificial. So from here, I went over by Fisherman's Village, kind of went to the end of the road there. Fisherman's Village will be on the left, and then this is sort of looking northbound right now, um, and the harbor is right there on the other side of those bushes. And again, you can see this definitely water remnants there where it was washing over and it was kind of interesting as I saw people walking their dogs and doing their morning exercises some of them were just walking barefoot on the sidewalk and carrying their shoes uh, but yeah if you look closely on the on the low side there you can actually see the waves coming through those bushes so the water is up over the normal area where it would be so I am now uh, heading east again on we uh, West Reda Esplanade, and I don't know the name of this little street here, but it kind of runs southbound and will connect back up to Marion. Uh, but again, you can sort of see just how much water there is here. Yeah, crazy. And the houses here, right? There's some that are just these unbelievably large houses built up on stilts. And then there's some of the ones that are a little older before they put them all up on stilts. And, you know, those are the, probably the ones that are a little bit more uh, at risk, if you will. So right now I'm at the corner here um, by the Military uh, Heritage Museum, and I'm turning westbound onto Marion Boulevard. Um, and I'm heading sort of toward Fisherman's Village or Punagorda Isles or even... Um, Ponce de Leon Park, if you will. Uh, but yeah, this, see, this, this is an example. I think this is probably one of the homes that is older. It's not built up on stilts. And, you know, I don't think the water is in that house, but boy, oh boy, is it close. And if there were some lapping waves, yeah, they may very well have seen some water inside that home, which is, which is frankly sad. And you can see we're getting here toward uh, what looks like the, the end of the water across Marion and Olympia and Reda Esplanade and down all these side streets that run north and south from the harbor through downtown Punta Gorda. And uh, yeah, right up to this little drainage canal that I'm about to go over where, you know, it's certainly full and doing everything it can to release some of the water out of this particular area. From here, I headed west all the way out to Ponce de Leon Park just to kind of see what it looked like. And you can see the water is definitely up over the boat ramp completely. And I was a little bit surprised to see the fishermen are still out there, but boy, are they hobby horsing along there. Um, these are the guys that go out and do the crab fishing, I think, typically three or four in a boat. Um, you know, not too bad, but it's got to be a little bit wacky loading your boat when you really can't see the boat ramp at all. And again, these guys probably do this once or twice a day, uh, every day. So as you can see, he's He's pretty good at getting this thing right into the water where he needs it and dropping his boat. They're clearly better at that than I am. It didn't take them long at all to load that boat just back on out of there. So. Uh, from here, heading on out, and I think uh, the next step here is really be thankful we didn't have any real damage, enjoy my cup of coffee, look out over the harbor, and call it a day. An El Nino winter can do to the state of Florida as we will have an area of lower pressure intensify with widespread rain and also uh, rumbles of thunder embedded into the mix. Take a look at Saturday. Most of the day is going to be a complete washout, and we're not talking for like a couple.